Come on, keep giving God glory if you know he's marvelous. Oh, come on, you can do better than that if you know he's marvelous. Oh, come on, come on, if you know he's marvelous. If you know that he's still a miracle working, wonder working, mountain moving, unconquerable God. Come on, you ought to praise him like you know it. Come on, you ought to praise him like you know beyond the shadow of a doubt that ain't nobody like your God. Some trust in horses. Some trust in chariots. But we shall trust in our God. He's still God. He, he's still God. He, he's still God. In the midst of a pandemic, he's still God. In the midst of social unrest, he's still God. In the midst of prevailing evil, he's still God. When your back is up against the wall and you're down to your last dime, he's still God. Somebody lift your hands, throw your head back and shout, he's still God. Come on, those of you who are watching this, if you're watching this, come on, throw your hands up. Throw your head back and shout, he's still God. Put it in the atmosphere. Put your faith in the atmosphere. Make your declaration of victory right now. Come on, declare you're an overcomer right now. <laughs> declare you're the head and not the tail. Above only and not beneath. Come on, declare that you will lend to nations and not borrow. Declare it right now. If you don't speak it, you won't see it. If you don't say it, you won't have it. Your words have created power. Lift your voices and shout hallelujah. He's still, he's still God. And he's marvelous. This is the Lord's doing. And it's marvelous in our eyes. God wants to give you a testimony that I call a nobody but God testimony. Yeah. How they do that? Nobody but God. How they get out of that? Nobody but God. How they get up off of that hospital bed? Nobody but God. How did their mind return to them? Nobody but God. Somebody throw your head back and shout, nobody but God. Whoa. If I don't preach, it'll be okay. I feel something stirring in this place. Tell me who can stand before us when we call on that great name. Jesus, who is the Son of God. Jesus, who is God in the flesh. Jesus, who is Emmanuel. Jesus, who is God with us. Precious Jesus, we have the victory. We ain't gonna get it, we got it. It ain't on its way, we got it. We ain't waiting for it, we got it. Hallelujah. Well, good morning, family. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. We honor and reverence the spirit of our Christ and we greet each and every one in the name that matters most and that is the matchless and majestic name of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. It's good to be alive, amen? And it's better to be alive and to be saved. And for those of you who are watching from wherever you're watching, we thank God for you, for you all across this nation and all around this world. Those of you who are viewing we thank you. We don't take your attendance uh, uh, with us, your participation with us lightly. Uh, we are honored and privileged that you would choose, that you would choose uh, to share your time of worship and celebration and praise with the TCI uh, church family. Most certainly welcome to the TCI experience and to the best church anywhere this side of heaven, Temple Church International. Those of you who are yet at home, that's right, that's right. We celebrate you. We miss you. 
we can't wait to see you again and we're just so thankful and grateful for what the people of God continue to do even in the time of pandemic, even in the time of trouble. Uh, Y'all forgive me for being a little, uh, a little uh, uh, not churchy right now, uh, but that was a song way back then. You millennials have no point of reference for this, but there was a group uh, called, two guys called McFadden and Whitehead. And the song was entitled, Ain't No Stopping Us Now. And when, and when God, y'all, those of you who are watching, y'all should see the faces of the millennials. They like, they giving me the, the Scooby-Doo face. <laughs> and they, <laughs> they don't know, but <laughs> ain't no stopping us now. And when God is on your side, there is no stopping you, no matter what comes against you. So thank you for sharing with us. There are just a few things I want to share with you before we get into the word. I want to thank Thank God for those who carry out worship so efficiently and so effectively. Uh, I want to thank God for uh, the elders and ministers uh, who carry on. Uh, we appreciate you, uh, Elder, Elder Barnes, Elder Greer. And most certainly, we uh, appreciate the woman of God who uh, just keeps the thing going behind the scenes, Elder Colbert. We appreciate you. I'm so thankful for the ministerial staff here at TCI. I was just a little weary, just a little worn throughout the course of this week, and uh, and uh, and I turned the mantle uh, uh, and the baton of prayer over into the hands of a very capable uh, ministry team, and they pray fire down from heaven. Just because you don't hear me doesn't mean I'm not on, <laughs> and I'm on. And when I tell you. Uh, Minister Jonathan Riggins and Minister Diane Barnes and Minister Tammy Williams, Minister Mary Tao and Elder Tim Greer. Uh, man, they they talk to God. That's my, my dad would say, uh, talk to God, son. Tell God, and the, and they told God. And so I appreciate and all of the we have some of our leaders who are here uh, and our mothers uh, who are here. Uh, who, who remind me again that they the mothers and I'm the son uh, in this relationship. They just come to church. They don't care nothing yet. We trying to keep them safe for COVID. They say we'll wear our mask and we showing up. And so we're so appreciative of the mothers and all the leaders and all who share with us. Today, somebody ought to shout today. Today, my brothers, my sisters, is a very important day. Souls to the polls, um, the uh, concerned clergy of Charlotte uh, are, are marching to uh, the polls today, and uh, most certainly we are going to uh, to gather uh, on this Sunday. Somebody ought to shout this Sunday. The actual the actual uh, s celebration begins at two o'clock p.m. We will gather at Romia Bearden Park, uh, but we are asking my brothers and my sisters uh, that you would please meet us there, even if you have voted, even if you have voted early. Uh, we want you just to come and share with us as. Uh, as the body of Christ, the church here in the city of Charlotte uh, comes together, uh, many leaders and, uh, and pastors and et cetera, and their leaders and their uh, church families will join and we will march uh, to Romere Bearden uh, Park. We're, uh, we want to advise you that parking is free at the Spectrum Arena and garages behind the arena and uh, there will be shuttles taking people from the parking garages to the park to the rally. Uh, if there are any pastors who are watching right now, and I got to get this out of the way because this word is just boiling on the inside of me. Uh, but if there are any pastors, pastor, if you're watching, we want you to come and, and share with us. We, uh, we are asking that you would wear the, uh, uh, the black preacher uniform is what it's called. Uh, black suits, uh, white shirts, uh, black ties, uh, and, uh, you know, and, Black shoes, I would say. Now, if you want to wear some fuchsia shoes or some electric blue shoes, we ain't going to turn your way. Uh, but we want you to join us. And those of you, uh, those, those of you pastors, we will meet, or there's parking for us at the Great Mount Moriah Primitive Baptist Church, their own trade street. Uh, we'll be leaving by 1.30, and we'll head over to the park, and we're going to start promptly at 2. 45 to 55 minutes, uh, we're going to have our celebration, etc., uh, our worship experience. Then we're going to move to the Spectrum Center. And those of us who have not cast our vote, uh, we'll cast our vote, and then we will disperse. So we ain't going to, uh, my dad would say, it don't take a long time to do nothing. And so we, uh, the purpose is not to uh, hold you uh, long at all, uh, but this is a very, very uh, important election, I believe, uh, beyond a shadow of my doubt, the most important in the 21st century, and in my recent knowledge, uh, and um, and 
I believe, one of the most important in the history of this nation. Now, we ain't telling you how to vote or who to vote for, uh, but uh, in TCI, I probably lose some people when I say this TCI, but I made this, I made this clear, I made this very, very clear in one of our Bible study sessions um, that uh, the reason that I'm voting is because people put their life on the line so that I could have the right to do so. Um, I, I have no faith in politicians or political systems. There's some good people, but I, there really are some good people. Uh, but, I, but, but my faith is in my God. And, uh, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm voting because I believe that it is, uh, it is a part of the, the, the responsibility of the believer to contribute according to his or her convictions and their faith to contribute in as much as possible to making the world in which we live a better place. And so I'm asking uh, that all of us would follow suit and all of us would cast our vote. Your, ba your, your, your ballot uh, is private. You're gonna be in the booth by yourself. And, uh, and uh, y'all know who we got in the White House now. And I'll leave it at that. Genesis chapter 22, let's get into the word. Last week, we, 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 we preached a message entitled Destiny Decisions, and we used as a scripture lesson um, the narrative of Father Abraham and the defining moment, not only in his life, not only in the, the life and history of uh, the nation of Israel, but the defining moment in our lives as believers in Jesus Christ and children of God. He's told again to take Isaac, his son, up to the top of a mountain and sacrifice him. And not only kill him, but he's told to, uh, to, to burn him up. And of course, we know the story when, when Abraham scales the mountain. Um, and when he gets to that place, the Bible says... Uh, that he doesn't have to do so and God supplies a sacrifice, watch this, a substitute for Isaac. And uh, I got a little caught up Dean Pam Hamilton last week when I just started reflecting on the fact that if, if God had let Abraham kill Isaac, then there would have been no Jacob, and if there had been no Jacob, there would have been no Judah. If there had been no Judah, there would have been no David. If there had been no David, there would have been no Solomon. If there had been no Solomon, there would have been uh, no, uh, no Joseph and Mary. And had there been no Joseph and Mary, the Christ would not have come to save our lives through the lineage that God has purposed for him to come. <sighs> I wish folk would just get excited about Jesus again. We said some things, hopefully, that made us think last week. And I want to say a few more things, hopefully, that'll make us think. I'm, Mother Killings, I'm not, I'm just going to try to talk through this. But I'm going to begin reading at verse number nine. I want to pick up there and then uh, say a few things and we're going to move on. What about this music ministry? Could grief of me. Whoa. I'm doing all this talking because you can't just sing anything by the Hawkins or the Winans or Kirk Franklin or, you know, some of my other favorites and expect me to just jump up behind here and I got to compose myself. So don't y'all worry. I'm watching the clock and I'll, I'll be done. Thank you, Mother. Genesis chapter 22. I want to begin reading at verse 9. If you have it, say amen. I'm reading from the New International Version. The Bible says, when they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and he took his knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Here I am, he replied. 
Do not lay a hand on the boy. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up and there in the thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the place the Lord will provide or Jehovah Jireh. To this day, it is said, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants, I'll make them as numerous as the stars in the sky, as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants, your whole family, your whole bloodline will take possession of, of the cities of their enemies and through your offspring all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for all things in Christ Jesus. We thank you for being a promise-keeping God. You watch over your word to perform it. And God, today we stand under what Peter calls the sure word of prophecy. A word that is yet unfolding even as we stand, as we speak, as we live. And even though we don't see it happening with our eyes, we trust that you're still at work behind the scenes. Thank you now for this opportunity to do a study in your word. Your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. You watch over your word to perform it. It will not return unto you void, but it will accomplish what you send it forth to do. Whatever your mind has designed, whatever your heart desires, and whatever you promised, it will come to pass if we will just trust you. So today we say in concert with the writer of the proverb, we trust in you with all of our heart. We don't lean to our own understanding, but in all of our way, we promise you, we, uh, we trust you. And you promise that you would direct our paths. So now, God, let revelation knowledge flow. Share your heart, reveal your mind, and in any way you bless us, we'll be satisfied. It is in the name of Jesus we pray. We boldly declare the devil is defeated. God, you're exalted. Jesus, you are our Lord. We receive now the anointing to preach, to hear, to teach, and to learn what your word instructs. In Jesus' name we pray. The devil is defeated. God, you're exalted once again. Jesus, you are our Lord. And all who agree with the prayer of the man of God, shout it hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Last week we talked about the fact that when they got to that mountain that God specified, it was not over that they had to climb. They had to climb, one theologian says, they had to climb 2,400 or over 2,400 feet after walking such a long distance without the benefit of a donkey, without assistance. They had to climb. Tell somebody beside you, it's worth the climb. Point to somebody else around you, tell them, it's worth the climb. Good morning, family. My brothers and my sisters, Australian-born rock climber, mountaineer, filmmaker, and author, Greg Child once said, and I quote, somewhere between the bottom of the climb and the summit is the answer to the mystery why we climb. That is to say that the ultimate reward is not reaching the top of the mountain, but Elder Greer, the ultimate reward is rather the lessons that the upward anti-gravitational move or walk teaches us about ourselves. What the climb teaches us about our commitment to purpose and ultimately about our submission to our divinely decided destiny. Sir Edmund Hillary, another mountaineer from New Zealand said, and I quote, it is not the mountain that we conquer when we climb, but it is ourselves. In other words, Anita Howard, 
It is the, the mastery of our will, the mastery of our emotions. It is the mastery of our own intellect that is both the reason for and the result of the successful trek to the pinnacle of the mountain. That the reason we make the climb, even when gravity is pulling us down, the reason that we succeed in our quest to reach a particular destination, and the result of the same is that we have mastered our will. Because when you're climbing, your will will tell you to quit. We have mastered our emotions because when you're experiencing the stress and the strain and the resistance of moving in an opposite direction of which gravity pulls, your emotions will tell you to give up. And when you are climbing, your intellect will tell you it does not make any sense to keep putting yourself through the pain. And so what you should do is abort the climb and go back down. In biblical symbolism, and I don't mean to insult your intelligence, but in biblical symbolism, a mountain represents adversities, challenges, and obstacles. Watch this that if we conquer them fat, we receive a reward of supernatural proportions. Mark 11, verse 23 says, and you know it as well as I do, or maybe even better, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart, but believes what they say will happen, it will be done for them. It's interesting now that Mark records these words of Jesus as Jesus is giving his disciples on a discourse, watch this, on faith. But not just faith. The kind of faith that enables you to forgive the things that have caused you to be disappointed, disheartened, and downtrodden. He's telling them, remember, to forgive, and they say it's a hard saying. How can we forgive? And he says you need to understand that forgiveness or unforgiveness is a mountain. But God will give you grace to conquer it. And if you can just conquer the thing that is deeply rooted in your psyche, in your soul, and the like, you will experience mountain-moving power. God will do something supernatural in your life that will cause you to know that it wasn't nobody but God who did it. Somebody ought to shout, yes, Lord, in this place. And my brothers and my sisters, I would like to suggest to you then that if, in fact, uh, Sir Edmund Hillary is right about the fact that the mountains that we conquer are not really the mountains that we climb, but the mountains that are in us, I would like to suggest to us that uh, we must overcome uh, certain mountains if we're going to experience the manifestation of destiny. And there are three mountains, and I think it's really interesting that there are also three hills or three mountains in Moriah and I think they each represent the mountains that we must overcome in our minds. I need you to repeat these after me. First of all, there is the mountain of doubt. Somebody shout doubt. Yeah. And secondly, there is the mountain of disappointment. Somebody shout disappointment. And then thirdly, it is the mountain, Deacon Nicagria, of delay. Somebody ought to shout delay. delay. And in our text, my brothers and my sisters, I really want to give some dap to Isaac. Because we're often talking about Abraham, and rightfully so, about what this mountain experience means for him. We talk about everything that Abraham has gained as a result of his obedience to God as he follows the instruction to take his son up to the top of the mountain and to sacrifice him. But let me give some dap to Isaac. Let me talk a little bit about Isaac because the truth of the matter is it is Isaac, not Abraham, who is the type of Christ. 
It is Isaac, not Abraham, who represents our Savior. It is Isaac, not Abraham, who has to make the ultimate sacrifice that if, in fact, he does not submit himself to the process that God has ordained, we would not be here today. So I know we celebrate Father Abraham, but I want to just give Isaac some dap. Somebody ought to shout, yes, Lord, in this place. In our text, then, Isaac, the promised child, has to overcome all three of these personal mountains. He has to overcome doubt. He has to overcome disappointment, and he has to overcome delay. My brothers and my sisters, as you well know, this narrative began with a directive from God to Abraham to take Isaac to the top of the mountain and to kill and incinerate him as a sacrifice. They reach the region of visibility of the mountain. When they are three days away, they see uh, the mountain. And when they see the mountain, God says to him, that is the mountain, the one there at the highest point that I want you to sacrifice Isaac on. Text also says, somebody else shot the text says, text also says that Abraham then turns to the young men who accompanied he and Isaac uh, to the plain of Moriah and he says to them y'all stay here with the donkey and then he takes, watch this the supplies for worship uh, he takes the wood he lays it on Isaac he takes the coal, he lays it on his shoulder, he takes the knife and puts it in his sheave he takes the rope and drapes it over his shoulder and now he and Isaac are climbing upward 2420 uh, 2, uh, feet upward journey to the top of the mountain as you well know at some point in the journey Isaac observed and is very perceptive of the fact that there is no animal for the sacrifice and he looks at his father and says pop I thought we were going up here to sacrifice and I see the wood I see the coal I see the rope I see the knife but where is the sacrifice and then Abraham speaks to Isaac and says to him son the Lord will provide for himself a sacrifice. You remember, I tried to tell you last week, it was that word of assurance from Abraham to Isaac that seemed to settle the fact that what by the time they got to the mountain, that would be a sacrifice waiting for them. Abraham assures him, and with that word, they continue to walk together to the appointed place. But check this out, y'all. When they arrive, Elder Colbert, there is still no lamb. When they get to the top of the mountain, when they get to the pinnacle of, 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 of that mountainous conglomerate, when they get to the place that God has said, when you get there, something is going to be there for you to give back to me. God have mercy. There is still no lamb in sight. Can, can I be a bit transparent? Because remember I had to tell you that it was worth the climb, but I can tell you that at some point, my brothers and my sisters, when you're dealing with destiny, sometimes when you get to the place that is appointed, you will have to deal with disappointment. You will, oh God, y'all, you will have to deal uh, with doubt and you will have to deal with delay because sometimes things don't look the way you thought they should look. Things don't play out the way you think they should play out. I'm telling you, sometimes when you get to the top, sometimes when you get to the pinnacle, it is almost like something is being pulled out from under you because you figure out that just because you made it to that place, it does not mean that the resistance stops. 
problems. It does not mean that the trouble subsides. It does not mean that everything is just going to be all right. So in 2004, some of y'all, some of y'all were with me then. In 2004, I was privileged to be asked to, to, be, uh, the, uh, to be the opening speaker for the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship uh, Conference uh, in Atlanta, Georgia. Phillips Arena, uh, it was the place that uh, many people, uh, uh, they want, they aspired to be. They, many people wanted to stand on that platform. People were brown nosing, paying money, cutting throats, and doing all that kind of stuff to get there. And I, I finally got there, and I got there. Y'all remember, you remember Mama, Mama Killers, you, you, you remember Vera. I, I got there, and uh, I said my piece for 35 minutes, and and the only feeling that I had was, is this all? Is this what people clamor to get? Is, is this what people, I thought, I was told that if I could reach that moment, I would reach the pinnacle. But the truth of the matter is, everything that I was told that would happen for me ministerially did not happen. As a matter of fact, the reverse happened. I had never experienced so much trouble and hate until I got to that place. As a matter of fact, it was 2004, and from that point up until now, 16 years, there have been all kinds of adversities and troubles, etc. I reached the pinnacle, God have mercy, but I found out that I had to deal with the disappointment. I had to deal with the doubt. Is this what God has called me to do? And, and why isn't it happening the way I thought it would happen? And, and, and why did this open up a new can of worms of trouble and adversity? And why did this not stop the attacks? Why did it invite attacks? All of this I had to deal with my brothers and my sisters. I came to suggest to you uh, that what I found out was it was not about getting the platform it was not about getting the opportunity to preach it was not about getting the opportunity uh, to speak to tens of thousands of people in one place and then others who were watching can I tell you what it was about it was about me learning some stuff about me and learning some stuff about my God and seeing if in fact I was doing what I was doing for noble reasons or were I doing them for selfish reason was I about glorifying God or was I about glorifying me would I quit on God when things did not turn out the way I wanted them to happen would I quit on God when my church goes through a storm would I quit on God when my marriage goes through turbulence that it did not survive would I quit on God when everything seemed to go to would I quit on God when everything that I did to help others did not come back in return would I quit on God I came to tell you that I found out in my mind, oh, my brothers and my sisters, that no matter what has happened, no matter how much disappointment, no matter how much I had to doubt, no matter how much the thing was delayed, delayed is not denied, and not now uh, was not does not mean not ever. And when I stand here 16 years later, I thank God that it was worth the climb. Is there anybody here who can look back at your life and say, I know I had some disappointments? I had some times when I doubted some stuff. I had some times where I literally had to go without because God has not yet done what he said he would do. But when I look over my life, I can say it was worth the climb. Is there anybody in here who can lift your hands and shout it was worth the climb? I ain't got what he promised yet, but it was worth the climb. I don't have everything in order yet, but it was worth the climb. I am not standing, watch this, in the man manifestation of promise but when I look back over my life I may not be where I want to be I may not be where I ought to be but I ain't where I used to be I am stronger I am wiser I am smarter somebody lift your hand open your mouth and shout it was worth the climb I've had moments of doubt the bond that was worth the time. Ooh, I've had to deal with disappointment. But Mama Judy, it was worth the climb. 
Things have been delayed and put on hold. But Deborah Green, it was worth the climb. Somebody lift your hand and shout, it was worth the climb. Well, my brothers and my sisters, a couple things I want to drop on you real fast. Y'all give me about 14 minutes and I think, uh, I think I'll be done. N- number one, uh, here's how you get the revelation. In the midst of delayed disappointment uh, uh, and uh, in the midst of doubt that it was worth the climb. I'm talking to somebody who's done what God told you to do. And you still feel empty. (laughs) I'm talking to somebody who's given what you've been told to give. And you still feel unfulfilled. I'm talking to somebody who's been standing on the promises of God. And it feels like the promises are shaking under your feet. First thing I want to tell you, y'all got to catch this. If it's going to be the worth, going to be worth the climb for you, uh, watch this. Deacon Angie Greer, you have to learn how to worship in the appointed place, even in the face of disappointments. Okay, let me say it again. Um, if you're going to be convinced mm, that it was worth the climb, You got to know how to worship in the appointed place in the face of disappointment. All right, y'all, 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 got, y'all got to catch this. Um, watch, watch this. Watch this, Mike. Um, Mike said, and Mike Hamilton, I want y'all to watch this. Tech says, somebody shot Tech says, that they finally arrive at the place. And when they arrive at the place, verse number nine says that Abraham, watch this, built an altar and arranged the wood on it. Now, y'all got to catch this. When they get there, there is still no lamb. (laughs) Abraham has made a faith statement. And said to Isaac, Isaac, I know we don't have a lamb now. But by the time we get to the place (laughs) that God has appointed, there will be a lamb waiting. There is no lamb. Watch this. But look at what Abraham does. When they reach the place, y'all got to catch this. He builds an altar with the material of the place where he is. Y'all missing this. Uh, Y'all remember he took with him wood. He puts the wood on Isaac. He takes coal with him. He carries the coal himself. He has the rope. He has the knife. He has everything necessary for sacrifice. And when he sees that there is no lamb in sight, he does not allow disappointment to overcome him. But he grabs the material that is needed to make an altar. And he builds an altar anyway. Y'all missing this. What I found out about Abraham is Abraham in his life uh, worship was a consistent practice and when you go through the life of Abraham starting at Genesis chapter 12 when God first speaks to him what does he do he builds an altar between Bethel and Ai and every time that God speaks to him in Genesis 15 God tells him I need you to kill some turtle doves and, and kill some animals that sacrifice to me he builds an altar he is committed watch this to worshiping even in the face of disappointment but that ain't really what I want you to look at here's what I want you to look at while Abraham y'all gotta catch this is 
putting the stones together for the sacrifice Isaac is just standing there watching which means y'all gotta catch this that he is also willing God have mercy to worship in the midst of his disappointment because even though there is no lamb there God has told them to worship anyhow and I need to speak to somebody in here under the sound of my voice to help you to know that if you're going to go to the next level in purpose and in destiny you gotta learn how to worship God even even when you are disappointed I know that seems to be elementary I know I'm preaching to some deep folk in here but have you ever been to a place that everything around you suggests disappointment suggests that God lied to you suggests that it ain't never gonna happen and watch this when you see that nothing matches up with what God has promised you you go to worry but I came to tell about 15 of y'all under the sound of my voice now ain't the time to worry as a a matter of fact when things look uh, like you are disappointed when you're disappointed uh, when you are disheartened I'm gonna preach whether y'all want me to or not when it is you think that things are being delayed what you need to do is lift your hand and declare like our forefathers father I stretch my hands to thee no other help I know if you withdraw yourself from it whether shall I go you know what Abraham was saying you know what Isaac was saying there may not be a sacrifice we may not have a lamb but we have a God who can supply the lamb that is needed and I'm going to worship him until I get what he said is there anybody in here besides me who is made up in your mind this ain't for the immature this ain't for the upstart saints this ain't for those of you who only walk with God when God is doing what you want him to do but I'm talking to those of you who look who have seasons where it looks like God has turned his back on you where it looks like nothing is going to come to pass where it looks like you're getting more hardship than you are blessing and in the midst of all of that you just worship him do I have any worshipers in here who say the situation may be crazy but I'm gonna still worship the circumstance may be wild but I'm still gonna worship him pain may still be in my body but I'm still gonna worship him my money may be low but I'm still gonna worship him I'm still under attack but I'm still going to worship him I'm disappointed but I'm still going to worship him can't see my way out but I'm still going to worship him lift your hands and worship him come on I need to hear a sound of worship I need to hear a sound of worship I need to hear a sound of worship I need some people who have climbed I need some people who have gotten to a place where you've obeyed God and it looks like God has forgotten what he promised you worship him lift your hand open your mouth and for about 10 seconds worship your God hey! Lord we worship you Lord we worship you Lord you we worship you you made a promise and we can't see it yet but we worship you instead of gaining we're losing but we worship you instead of being here we're still hurting but we worship come on I need some real worshipers come on come on hell in my home I'm still worshiping just got laid off I'm still worshiping the weight is getting heavier but I'm still worshiping so number one ah! so number one you gotta worship in the appointed place just point to somebody and say neighbor you're right where God wants you to be <laughs> you, you're right in that vicinity you, you're right in that I know it ain't working the way you want it to but you're in the appointed place I, I, I was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the Lord somebody shout yes Number two, number two, y'all, excuse me. Number two, somebody just shout, it's worth the climb. I feel faith rising in here. No, I feel real faith. 
Not the faith for stuff. Not the faith for cars and houses. Not the faith for all kinds of material things. But the kind of faith that can tap into the power of God and move mountains of doubt, delay, and disappointment. Somebody shout yes, Lord. Number two. Big name's Greer, watch this. Carol Jones, watch this. Mama Ice Greer, watch this. Oh God, I feel like preaching, y'all, excuse me. I really did just want to teach this and talk this through. I really did, I really did, y'all. Mel and Perry, St. Keisha, St. Dennis, y'all gotta forgive me, Mother Willie, y'all gotta forgive me. Oh God. Number two, this is going to be rough for y'all, but just relax. When I finish this, we're going to be okay. But Cynthia Glenn, watch this. Um, if your testimony is uh, that it's worth the climb, you have to learn, y'all are not going to like this, but we'll get to something you like in a minute. To not fight the process of purpose. Mm -hmm. uh, if your testimony is going to be, it's worth the climb. Mildred Kimberly Don Lee, um, we have to learn not to fight the process of purpose. When I get it from, I'm glad you asked. I got it from the B portion of verse number nine. Verse number nine says <laughs> that Abraham arranges the stones into an altar. And then he takes the wood off of Isaac's shoulder. And places the wood, y'all got to follow me, I'm almost done. He places the wood on the altar and then he takes the rope huh, and wraps it around Isaac and lays Isaac on the altar. That may not mean anything to you unless you remember that when Abraham sired Isaac, he was a hundred years old. Last week's message told you that this journey was not an overnight journey. And it told you that Isaac was not an arm baby. But he was between 17 and 21 years old. So now there is no lamb in sight. But Isaac understands through his father's example what sacrifice involves. And so whenever the lamb was brought for sacrifice, the first thing the one who was sacrificing the lamb had to do was to wrap it up in rope. Y'all got to catch this. So he wraps the rope around Isaac. And then, after he wraps the rope around the sacrifice, he then lays it on the altar to kill it, to skin it, and to gut it. The text says, somebody shout, the text says. The text says that he bound Isaac, God have mercy, and laid him on top of the wood. Y'all got to catch this. Isaac is between 17 and 21 years old. Abraham is around 120 years old. In any culture, I don't care how good a help and health and shape you in, 120 years is 120 years. And the younger man is stronger than the older man. But listen to what happens. I'm going to preach whether y'all want me to or not. Isaac stands there, allows his father to wrap the rope around him and lay him on the altar. And the text does not suggest that he, I'm preaching whether y'all want me to or not, that he puts up a fight. Can I help y'all to understand how to overcome your doubt? How to overcome disappointment? How to overcome 
delayed promises realize that it's all a part of the process and some stuff that God is allowing in your life instead of you fighting against it you ought to just go with it oh God I'm going to preach whether y'all want me to or not. I told y'all y'all weren't going to like this part of our problem is we don't properly perceive that what God is allowing is something that is setting up a scenario of miracles and blessings and favor to be released on our life I know y'all wouldn't go shout about that but somebody in here who knows I'm preaching right somebody in here who's oh God I'm gonna preach who's mature in your faith can look back over your life and say there was some stuff I was fighting against some stuff I was trying to hold together some stuff I was trying to keep in place that God said this is a part of the process of me manifesting destiny in your life so you had to let them go you had to walk away I'm gonna preach whether you want me to or not you had to just move back and let God do what he was gonna do who am I preaching to in here who said I've learned not to fight against the process oh God I'm preaching to some mature folk now God says in this season you got to understand that I'm the God who will show my ways to certain one of you in other words in the midst of it you will know that it's God it might not look like God but it is God look at Isaac daddy promised me that there would be a lamb but there ain't no lamb daddy promised me that we would worship and go back and now here he is wrapping me getting ready to sacrifice me but I ain't gonna fight against it I'm gonna go with the flow watch this because if God made a promise he got to do what he said am I preaching to anybody in here who's made up in your mind I'm gonna go with God I'm gonna go with the flow I'm gonna go with the process I'm not gonna fight against what I know God is using to perfect me to strengthen me to make me wiser to take me higher lift your hands and shout yes Lord maybe we'll shout next week y'all hear me I don't know who I'm talking to back here in this pit but God will put you in a place where you can't fight a process he'll put you in a place <laughs> where he tells you just trust me I know what they're doing to you trust me I know what they're saying trust me I know what their plans are trust me for many are the plans of a person's heart but it is the purpose of God that prevails lift your hands open your mouth and shout God I trust you So if your testimony is going to be, it's worth the climb. Don't fight the process of purpose. <laughs> He'll take you to a mountain where he promised that there would be a lamb. Tell you to build an altar when there's no lamb in sight. He'll tell you to move without telling you where you're going. He'll tell you to let go of what's now without telling you what's coming next. Somebody shout, it's worth the climb. Number three, we'll shout next week. I just, um, number three, here's where everybody ought to shout. If you don't shout, like Joe Biden said, if you don't vote for him, you ain't black. If you don't shout about this, you ain't a believer. Number three, and I got to get out of here. Don't shut me down. Listen. And then let's shout together. <laughs> Number three, <laughs> you can say it's worth the climb. That can be your testimony. When you get the revelation, watch this. That the provision is the protection. Okay. Y'all missed it. Is this too deep for a Sunday morning, guys? Look back over your life and be in a place. Watch this. 
where you know you're supposed to be, but ain't nothing going the way that you were promised it was going to go, or watch this, that you thought it should go. When you get the revelation that the provision is the protection. Okay, where'd you get it from, Bishop? I, I see y'all looking at me, that, but that's, 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 that's why that's why I'm up here and I'm trying to help us all to understand. Abraham, I'm done. Abraham wraps the rope around Isaac, lays him on the altar. Isaac ain't putting up a fight or a struggle. And he's laying there, watch this. And it would seem to me, knowing the end of the story, that God would have stopped when he saw Abraham's faith and when he saw Isaac's submission. <laughs> Y'all got to catch this. But text says, somebody shout, text says. But the text says that after he laid him on the altar, he reached into his sheath and pulled out the knife and raised it above his head as, into, as if to plunge it in Isaac's heart. Watch this. And when he lifted his hand, ooh, God have mercy. When he took the position to thrust the stave into his heart, he hears a voice. And the voice says to him, Abraham. And Abraham says, here I am. Now y'all missed this and I'm done. I should have been done five minutes ago. But remember I told y'all that sometimes the voice of God will tell you something that contradicts the promise of God. So God told him at the beginning of Genesis 22 <laughs> to kill him. And now God is telling him not to kill him. And if I'm Abraham. I'm asking God, which one do you want? Because you told me to kick Ishmael out. And you left me only with Isaac. And then you told me to take Isaac up here and to sacrifice him. And now you're telling me not to go through with it. Which one do you want? <laughs> God, y'all ain't never had to deal with God about that. Okay, God, what do you want from me? You told me to do this and I did this and now I'm getting this. And now you're telling me to do something else. But the last thing you told me to do. I up with, wound up with mud on my face. So now am I going to have mud on my face when I do the next thing? And text says, somebody shot text says, and I, I'm closing. Text said, he said, uh, don't lay your hand on the boy. Because now God knows you're serious. And Abraham says, in essence, or at least I would say in my spirit, all right, God, you know that I'm serious. But how do I know that you serious? <laughs> and notice <clears throat> what text says, and I'm closing here. Says that Abraham looked up and he saw a ram <clears throat> caught by his horns in the thicket. Now, y'all miss what I said. Because when they first got <clears throat> to the top of the mountain, there was no lamb in sight. Uh, but Abraham built an altar anyway. And Isaac worshipped as a sacrifice himself despite the imminent danger. And just when it looked like God was going to allow Isaac to die, God speaks and says, there, there is the lamb that I promised you. The old folk would say, God may not come when you want him. But he's always on time. 
I wish you'd touch your neighbor or just reach at him, point at him and say he's always on time. He may not come at the exact moment, but I promise you before the clock strikes 12, God's going to show up and show out. Somebody ought to shout, yes, Lord. And here's what God said, don't kill Isaac. <laughs> and y'all think it's a word of assurance for Abraham. But I believe it's a word of assurance for Isaac. He says, don't kill him because your promise depends on him remaining alive. And he says, now don't kill him, but look over in the thicket. And there you will see the lamb that I promised you. Y'all miss what I said. I said the provision is the protection. And notice what God does when he supplies the lamb. He protects Isaac from what Abraham was about to do to him. All right, let me find some more Bible so y'all can shout with me the way I shouted last night. The Bible declares that surely they will form or surely they will come against you. But they won't have me on their side. He said no weapon. Ha, formed against you ha, shall be able to prosper y'all miss what I said God provided and when he provided ha, he saved Isaac's life ha, and this is for those of you who can take this ha, those of you who know this word is for you ha, you did not understand ha, why you had to go through the disappointment ha, you did not ha, understand ha, why you had those seasons of doubt ha, and it looked like God wasn't going to do what he said. You could not understand while you submitted to God's will. But the more submitted you became, the longer you had to wait on promises. But God told me to tell you, I'm going to make a way for you to get out of whatever your doubt, your delay, and your disappointment has created. Point to your neighbor, say, neighbor, the word of God is right that God will not allow you to be tempted above what you're able but he's faithful that with the temptation he will provide a way of escape that you may be able to bear it somebody in here ought to be shouting right now because God said the way I'm going to protect you is by giving you what I I promise you, huh, I'm going to protect you huh, from the attacks of enemies huh, because I'm going to bless you huh, right where you stand. Huh. Come here, David. Huh. Help me to preach it. Huh. Where is it huh, that you got an increased anointing? Huh. Where is it huh, that you got favor huh, to lead you on huh, to the place of promise? Huh. He said uh, that God huh, prepared a table for me in the presence uh, of my enemy. Uh, grab your neighbor. Uh, no, don't grab him. Just fist bump him. Uh, point at him and say, neighbor, uh, the provision uh, will be your protection. Uh, what God uh, is about to do in your life uh, in this next season uh, is going to shield you uh, from all the fiery darts uh, of the enemy. Uh, what God uh, is about to do uh, because of your obedience uh, is about to blow the mind of everybody who prophesied your demise who said you wouldn't make it notice what God said they will rise but not by me I need you to point at somebody and say neighbor in this next season keep quiet and let God speak for you come here Isaac what happened on the mountain I heard said I heard the voice of God tell Abraham don't harm him he's special to me and I need you to convince yourself that the reason God is protecting you the reason God is opening doors the reason God is making ways is because I'm special to him. Come on, talk to yourself. Say, self, if nobody tells you, I am 
special to God. Y'all ain't talking. Say it to yourself again. Self, if nobody pats you on your back, if nobody comes to see about you, if nobody understands your struggle, if nobody understands your plight, if nobody shows you sympathy in the midst of your struggles, if everybody leaves you and nobody stands with you in your trials, take this to the bank. I am special to God. Put it in the atmosphere. Forget your neighbor. Talk to yourself and say, I am special to God. I am the head and not the tail. I am above only and not beneath. I am more than a conqueror. Shucks. Y'all help me to preach. It was worth the climb because I found out that when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up next Thursday. Mama will have been gone for one year. I thought I could make it without Mama Lord, but here I stand. Not only am I making it, I'm stronger, I'm wiser, I'm better. Here I stand, I'm standing on the promises of Christ, my King, shout yeah, shout yeah, shout yeah, hallelujah, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Not trust the sweetest brain, but holy lean on Jesus' name, on Christ. Thought I couldn't make it without daddy. On Christ, thought I couldn't make it without mama. On Christ, thought I couldn't make it with people that I poured into who are plotting and planning. But on Christ, the solid rock. Sand on oh, the ground is sinking sand. Shout yeah! Shout yeah! Shout yeah! It's worth the climb. Point to somebody say it's worth it. Don't give up. Don't get disappointed. Don't get hardened. Don't doubt. Stand. 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 It's worth it. It's worth it. There is nothing or nobody that you'll lose in this season that won't be replaced by better. How do you It's worth it. It's worth the climb. Elder Greer, you're right, son. Elder Greer told me a few days ago, two weeks ago, as a matter of fact, he says, Bishop, this next season belongs to climbers. Watch this. Who left their donkeys at the foot of the mountain and carried burdens and weights without the assistance of anybody else. God said, if you can climb, I'll bless you. Where are my climbers? Where are my climbers? Where are my overcomers? Where are my world changers? Where are you? Somebody needs to put that in the comments. Hashtag, the climbers are here. 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 here. I've come too far to turn around.
What God does for you in this next season is going to be the very thing that protects you. It's going to insulate you. It will not be your connections. It will not be your confederacies. It will not be anything other than what God does for you. Just lift your hands and go ahead and worship because that's where it all started. We're going home. That's where it all started. No lamb in sight, but I'm still going to worship. <laughs> Promise looked like I missed it, but I'm still going to worship. Can you imagine what's going through Isaac's mind? You promised me that that would be a lamb. He could have easily, y'all got to be here next Sunday. Melinda, he could have easily, watch this Diane, watch this daughter, watch this daughter run. He could have easily ran back down to the mountain to his friends because the young men, they, they call young men, they were in their 20s around his age because his friends were waiting there. I don't know who I'm talking to, but the Lord told me in this season, you have to have a greater allegiance to your father, your heavenly father, than you do your friends. He could have run for safety. But he stayed. And he trusted God to save his life. And listen to what happened. Isaac lives on to marry Rebecca. And Rebecca birthed Jacob. And Jacob births 12 sons and one daughter. I told y'all earlier, one of the sons is Judah. <laughs> and Judah births a man eventually by the name of Obed. And Obed has a son named Jesse. And Jesse has a son named David. And David has a son named Solomon. Jesus comes. The manifestation of the promise is going to come if you don't fight the process. This is the corrective word for somebody. Lord, why won't you let me at him? Because if I let you at him, it's going to mess everything up. wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. Isaiah says that Jesus would go before the shearers like a dumb sheep. The smartest thing you can do is be dumb. Dumb as in not being able to speak. Let God do it. Tell everything God reveals you. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you don't. Some things God says to you, Minister Tao, he said, I'm just telling you this so you can watch this. Showing you who's who, just watch. Don't just watch. The text says Elisha is minding his business. God is talking to him and telling him to tell the king this is what's coming next there will be nothing that will blindside you in this next season if there's a prophetic anointing on your life y'all better hear me if there's an anointing if there's an anointing to do the work of God to, to, to share the heart and the mind of God Amos says that God will do nothing unless first he shares it with his servants, the prophet. Can't just be a prophet. You got to serve. Lift those hands, please. We're getting ready to go. Father, I pray for every hand lifted, every hand that is lifted there in cyberspace. There's somebody, God, who was doubting whether or not the climb was worth it. Somebody who felt like you left them hanging out there. 
somebody who felt like God you were not on their side but God in the midst of their pain in the midst of disappointment in the midst of their dismay in the midst of the delay give them the testimony as they worship as they trust you and as they believe in you to do what only you can do to declare that it's worth it if there's anyone who's watching me now who does not know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior just repeat these words after me I gotta move fast we gotta get out of here just say Lord save me word of God says whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved who shall call on his name shall not be ashamed if you call him Lord that means you confess with your mouth that he is Lord if you're talking to him you're not talking to a dead man you're talking to a man that was dead but is now alive you believe that God is raised from the dead he said you shall be saved perhaps you don't have a church home maybe those of you who are watching want to connect with TCI I'd love to be your pastor we'd love to be your church family in either way my brothers and my sisters if you've given your life to Christ if you want to be a part of our ministry we'd love to welcome you here I'd love to be your pastor you can go to our website tci-charlotte.com you can click on you can click on uh, the pages where we have forms that you can fill out a new convert form a new member form reach out to us give us all the information we'll reach back out to you and let you know about your new life in Christ and or your new life as a member of TCI I'm done I love you remember the day at 2 o'clock we'll meet at Romere Bearden Park please meet us souls to the pole I need everybody in there if, if you're able to walk those of you who are watching if you're able to watch I want you my brother my sister to join us today even if you voted as a sign of solidarity I love you now father dismiss us from this place but never from your presence beloved remember you go along your way to render no one evil for evil render everyone good for good overcome evil with good and render your all into the most high God now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest for and abide with you henceforth now and forevermore all who agree with the prayer of the man of God shout out hallelujah amen thank you Jesus love you so much have a great day And that, and that is, is to remind everyone, everyone we must go, go out, out and vote. vote. The right to, right vote, to vote is and can no longer be an anecdotal gesture, gesture. But, it but it is an is imperative. imperative. Our vote, our vote is, our, is voice. our voice. It's, it's our, responsibility our responsibility to ensure that, that our families, our friends, our friends and our communities all have, have a good a quality, quality of life. life. This year, this year November, November 3rd, 3rd, is the most important vote of our lives. In addition, In addition to our, to our presidential, presidential election, election, we have, we have several, several federal, federal, state, state local, local, and judicial, and judicial races, races that are on the ballot. ballot. If you believe in health care, you're, on, you're the ballot. on the ballot. If you care, if you about, care about affordable housing, 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 it's on it's the ballot. ballot. If you if care, you about, care social about social justice, justice, it's, it's on the ballot. ballot. We're, not We're not trying, trying to, tell to tell you who to vote, to vote for. for. You, you can work on that part. We need your participation. On October 18th, at Roman Park, Park at 2 p.m., we'll begin with the rally, rally and we're and going, going to march to, march to Special Arena, arena and, let and let our voice, voice be heard, heard through, through voting. voting. Meet us at Roman Park, Park as we march to the Spectrum arena, arena here in the city of Charlotte. Charlotte. Once said, we're, we're gone for protest to the post. Meet us, meet us there. there. Matter of fact, meet us there. there. We're going to go to the Spectrum Center. Center. We're going to march, march there. there. We're going to stroll there. there. We're going to roll there. there. Get there any way you can. can. It's going to be a great time, time of fellowship, a fellowship and a profound, and a profound time, time of shifting the narrative for our community. community. Your vote, Your vote has, has purpose. purpose. Make sure our voice, our vote is heard. Everyone who lives in the Charlotte-Mecklenburg area is part of our village. Join, Join us, us for Souls, Souls to the Polls, Polls. October, October 18th, 18th, 2 p.m., Romeo Beard Park, Park, Old Charlotte, Old Charlotte New, New Charlotte. Charlotte. Again, Again let's, let's come, come together, together to create, to create next, next Charlotte. Charlotte. Looking, Looking forward, forward to seeing, seeing you there. You there. Let's go! Let's go.